Yo, what's going on people? It's your boy Ape Hancho back at you again with another video. And so for this next one, we've got to head over to Wirral. And over these past couple of days, we've been going over some stories that involve daylight shootings. And believe it or not, we're here once again in all too familiar territory with another incident. What I find interesting though, is that last year, you would have thought given the fact that we was in a pandemic, these types of crimes would have been lowered or if not lowered, not so obvious to the general public but again like we've seen over the past couple of days we have seen either shootings taking place in front of the general public and both of them were in broad daylight and today's story we're here once again so this story starts on the 18th of june 2020 and all we know from reports is that it's believed that 32 year old david Pooh had a vendetta of some sorts against a rival gang member known as 21 year old adam kane it's unclear why there was a vendetta but it is believed that both men are somehow linked to organized crime groups but again as the 18th of june came around david would act out on this vendetta and after quite literally stalking Adam's movements, he tracked him down to a McDonald's restaurant at Croft Retail Park in Wirral. Adam would pull up to the drive-thru in his car, and then this would happen. At 5.30pm in broad daylight, David would approach Adam's vehicle whilst he was at the McDonald's drive through He tries to actually open the door, but when that fails, he fires into the front of the car and he hits Adam as Adam tried to escape into the back seat. For Adam, this meant he'd been shot in the right leg and left buttock and then he spent two days in hospital where fortunately he suffered from no life-changing or life-threatening injuries. After shooting Adam in front of horrified families with children, David then fled the scene. He returned to the van that he arrived in, which was driven by a man named James O'Neill. A man known as James Nolan, not to be confused with James O'Neill, had also been in the van. What should be noted though is that although David and James Nolan had been aware of some sort of attack about to take place, James O'Neill, the driver, had no knowledge of this hit being taken. Rather, he thought he was taking both of them on a cannabis run. And on an extra side note as well, James Nolan was aware of an attack, but was unaware that David actually had a firearm on him. After David had got back into the van, James O'Neill had dropped the pair off to James Nolan's sister's house in Prenton, who's also David's cousin. They wanted a lift into Liverpool, I'm assuming, to get out of the area, but she refused to give them a lift. It was here James Nolan then asks for a plastic bag for his clothes before calling a taxi to get them away from the area. CCTV would actually pick up James appearing to wrap up an item outside, but from reports it isn't clear what exactly he was wrapping up. James O'Neill, the driver, was first to be arrested after being tracked down by police a short while later after the shooting, more than likely due to CCTV evidence, because again, the shooting did happen at a retail park. David would hand himself in the day following that, and then James Nolan would be arrested the day after David handed himself in. They would all initially go on to be charged with attempted murder, which they all denied, and so a trial was about to go ahead, but before the trial went ahead, David would go on to plead guilty to inflicting grievous bodily harm with intent and possession of a firearm. James Nolan admitted to inflicting grievous bodily harm with intent and James O'Neill pleaded guilty to assisting an offender, all to which the prosecution was happy with and so no trial was to go ahead. Now, although prosecutors accepted these pleas, they did go on to say that the remaining charges would be left to lie on their files. The Crown accepted that James Nolan knew of an intention to cause Adam Kane really serious serious harm but didn't know there was a gun involved and that James O'Neill thought he was ferrying the two men to get cannabis. So in the sentence and hearing a timeline of events was laid out and the prosecution said that Adam had been quote a sitting duck when he was shot in broad daylight at a McDonald's drive through as a part of a gangland vendetta attack by people involved in an organised crime group. Describing the shooting itself, it was thought that after being shot, 
Adam had decided to take it upon himself to drive away from the scene with witnesses describing him as scared. When he arrived at an address on Heather Dean, he called an ambulance. When police arrived at the scene, it was heard that they had spoke to McDonald's staff and customers and what they described to police was that they were terrified and had been shaken by the incident. An employee at the McDonald's who prosecutors say had a quote ringside view said it would have been impossible for David to have missed Adam in the shooting. Throughout the court hearing it was also told that the victim Adam had decided not to cooperate with the police in the situation and refused to give a victim impact statement to the court. The judge in the case, Judge Watson, said this must have involved a significant degree of premeditation a planned targeted attack, part of a vendetta or enforcement, planned so that Adam Kane had no means of escape. The pre-sentence report confirms the background, which was clear enough anyway already, this was in reality part of ruthless enforcement of an organised crime group's power and its wish to demonstrate control over those whom it influences. Addressing David, he added, it is very difficult for me to understress the gravity of this offence committed as it is against a background of drugs, organised crime and the enforcement of unlawful aims of the organised crime group. It was then he handed David a 12-year and 9-month jail sentence with three years on extended licence and he must serve a minimum of eight years and three months before applying for parole. For James Nolan, the judge handed him seven and a half years and will have to spend at least four years and ten months in prison, whilst James O'Neill had been handed a 17-month prison sentence. And so, a very lucky escape for Adam indeed. Now, for David to have walked up to the car like this and essentially trap him in the car i mean don't get me wrong the door handle was locked again very luckily that it was locked but for him to get that close to the car and open fire and then for adam to walk away with non-life-changing and non-life-threatening injuries is again very lucky to say the least but this must have been extremely terrifying for the small children that were around at this time of the shooting and it's probably going to stay with them for quite a while so i am hoping if anyone was affected by the situation especially the children they can get the help that they need moving forward but let me know what you guys think of this down in the comment section below. Give the video a little like. And if you want the latest drill, street and music news out of the UK, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your boy 8 Pancho, and I'm out.